This conference will now be recorded. Hi, everybody. This is Vivek here from Dex Lab Analytics. So today we are going to talk about some of the most important and commonly used functions in MS Excel. So these are very basic functions that we are going to talk about. So let's get started. So to begin with, we will start with a couple of functions which would involve uh, us going through functions like sum, average, minimum, and maximum. So over here in front of our sheet, let's say that this is a mark sheet of a, a bunch of students. And uh, we would like to find out what is the total marks scored by each of the students. So it's pretty simple. So basic rule of Excel is that whenever you start a function, you either start with an equal to sign or a plus sign. In my case, I generally use equal to because that's my style. I'm comfortable with it. And as we are supposed to figure out the total, uh, it's pretty simple. You just use the term sum, and that's exactly the function. Press start and select the range you are looking to find the sum for. Close the function, hit enter, and there it is. Moving on to the next, we would like to find out the average. So it's pretty simple. It's average. Again, hit tab, select the range, and you go ahead. Okay. And that's our average for Simon. And now I would like to find out the minimum marks. And we repeat the procedure. And the minimum marks scored by Simon was 45. And now we would like to find out the maximum marks. So the function is max. And once again, we select the range and enter. Now I would like to find out the same for the rest of the crowd. So that's it. So we saw some function, average marks, minimum marks, and maximum marks in the function sum, average, minimum, and maximum. Now moving on to our next sheet. So we would now like to convert the various names over here into various cases. So let's say you want all the names in uppercase, or you want all the names in lowercase, or you want all the names in proper case. So uppercase will make all the words in caps. So it's pretty simple as the name suggests equal to upper I select close it and enter and you can see that Simon is now in all caps now I want it in all I want all in lowercase so I write lower and then once again I select so I'm over here I'm using uh, my result from the previous cell and now you can see that uh, all are in lowercase. And I want it back in proper case, that is as it was originally. So I write proper, and now I'm selecting my previous result, and enter, and you can see that it is back in proper case. So that is the right use case of how you use your upper, lower, and proper case. So now we will move on to our next sheet and over here we are going to talk about the content concatenate function so let's say you have a first name and a last name and you would like to concatenate into a single cell that is the full name in this case there are times when you would want a space in between the two cells you would like to merge and there are times you would not need it for example let's say you are supposed to add uh, a couple of uh, digits uh, along with a couple of alphabets to form a unique number in that case you might not require the space however in this case uh, since uh, i need the space sign to be there so i will work around it accordingly so once again equal to and then we type concatenate and you can see the function popping up and we select so i am taking c4 now i need space so for space, I open inverted commas, put a space, then again an inverted commas to close that. Again, I use a comma and then I select the next cell that I want to concatenate and I close the function and here it is. Let's say I did not want space between Jasmine and Miller. It's pretty simple. We write equal to concatenate and then we pick C5 followed by E5 and you would see that there is no space however uh, I need space so I am going to keep it in proper form and that's how you concatenate the functions now next is a very basic but yet again a very important function 
that is uh, the count if functions that we are going to do so over here we have a range which has uh, a couple of numbers a couple of alphabets and some spaces so we are going to use count count a and count blank functions to find out or to use various functions so let's say that you have uh, a data set wherein you would want to find out what are the number of times only numbers have occurred in that case it's pretty simple you just put count you write the count function you select the range in my case it is a1 a1 is to a9 and i close it and it will give me so you can see that five times uh, the numeric value have come in now let's say i want to know uh, the total number of uh, numerics as well as alphabet occurrences are there so it's pretty simple we want to find out both the number and text values so we go for equal to and then we go for count a so count a will give you all, all the values or the count for all the numbers and text values that has been there in the range and once again i put tab and here i select my range and now we will see that it gives us the number seven so you know a lot of people would ask me that what if i do not want uh, the total count neither do i want the count of just the alphabets uh, just the numbers but i want just alphabets so it's pretty simple uh, you do a count a and you minus a count and you would get the number of only alphabets occurring in the range so i would request you to go ahead and test it at your end see whether it works or not share that on the comment section in case you are unable to figure it out let me know i will definitely come back to you with replies for the same however it's pretty simple i have shown you the count function i have shown you the count a function all you need to do is count a minus count in the same range and you will have the result give it a try we are pretty sure you will be able to do it and let us know what is that function in the comment sections below okay now i would like to count how many blanks are there in the given range so like the name suggests count blank so i use the count blank function i press tab i select my range i close the function and here it is we have two spaces in the range by the way the answer to the number of alphabets would be again two however the approach is something i already shared with you just try it at your end and see whether you get the result or not and do share the function in the comment section below now once again uh, let's say that we want to uh, put certain conditions on the basis uh, we want to set up certain parameters in the data set and on the basis of that we want to we want our excel spreadsheet to give certain results so again we have a list of marks over here ranging from 50 to 89 and we want to and the passing marks over here is 40 so anyone scoring above 40 should be classified as pass and anybody scoring below 40 should be classified as fail so let's prepare our uh, function the conditional function for the same so once again it's very simple we start with f and then we open the function and uh, we give the reference as a2 and we want to check whether it is greater than 40 or not so this is the greater than sign 40 followed by a comma and then open inverted commas if it is greater than 40 it would be true that is my first statement and you can see the function is self-explanatory and then again comma and then if not true then i am putting it false you can put anything you can put pass fail you can put uh, print do not print so i follow true false however let's since it is marks let's replace it with pass and fail so i want to print pass and i want to print fail and let's see whether it gives the result or not so yes it is giving me the result it is greater than 40. so these are certain basic functions of excel that is very popularly used and i'm very sure that these functions would come in pretty handy for you guys so that is it for today we will talk about more functions in our upcoming vlogs do remember to like and share this video and subscribe to our channel to stay updated about the various big data, data science, machine learning and analytics related updates. Do use the comment sections to come back with the solution that I have asked you guys to try at home. Also use the comment section to share ideas and suggestions for our next videos. Until then, keep 
learning. Stay tuned. Thank you.